Welcome to Lab 5. In this lab, you will learn two popular defense mechanisms against control flow hijacking attack. We have three learning objectives in this lab. After completing this lab, you will be able to identify data execution prevention, shortly DEP, and address space layout randomization, shortly ASLR. Not only that, you should be able to recognize a powerful class of vulnerability called format string vulnerability which render both defenses ineffective. Lastly, you should be able to describe exploitation technique against the format string vulnerability. In this week's tutorial, you will write an exploit against a simple form of format string vulnerability. This is a simple stack overflow vulnerability that we discussed before. To exploit this vulnerability, an attacker can simply provide a longer input than the allocated buffer. We also talk about two typical targets for the craft return addresses, the shellcode injected as part of the input or through an invalid variable as we can launch the program by ourselves in this case. In fact, to make such an exploit possible, we have made two assumptions in this attack. First, we as an attacker know the address of shellcode, either the address of buffer target one or the address of the invalid variable for target 2. Second, we also assume that the stack or heap memory regions are read, writable, and executable at the same time, so that we can directly execute the injected code as it is. In this week, we are going to learn two defense mechanisms, data execution prevention, shortly DEP, and address space layout randomization, shortly ASLR. Both defense mechanisms in concepts are easy to understand. With DEP, an attacker can directly execute the injected code since the stack or heap memory regions are not executable anymore. With ASLR, an attacker doesn't know the exact addresses of both targets as the main lay memory layout is randomized at the execution of the binary. The key idea of DEP is not to make a memory region writable and executable at the same time. For example, with DEP, stack and heap memory regions are not executable anymore as you can check their permission in a process memory map. The key idea of ASLR is also very simple. In every process invocation, it randomizes the process memory regions. If you invoke the program two times, the memory maps of both execution become different. These figures represent a set of addresses collected from 10,000 executions of program in x86 32-bit and 64-bit architecture. X-axis represents a half byte of the address, and the Y-axis represents each value. The heap map represents the occurrence of each value. The black shows 100% occurrence, and the white shows no such an occurrence at all. In other words, the gray regions in these figures show the randomized addresses. As you can see in each figure, the real architecture doesn't provide the perfect entropy in practice. By the way, you can check our script that can measure such an entropy of your platform in one of our challenges. Another limitation of ASLR is that offset inside each modules are constant because the randomization happen per module basis. For example, this script print out the address of printf and system when invoke. Although the outputs of two invocations are different, the offset between printf and system is constant across the invocation. It's worth emphasizing the security implications of both mitigation scheme. Due to DEP, an attacker cannot inject the code anymore so the attacker should reuse the existing code gadget. Due to ASLR, an attacker cannot identify the target address anymore, so the attacker should first delete a code pointer to bypass ASLR before launching the actual exploit. In this week, we will explore a powerful class of vulnerability called format string vulnerability that help attacker to bypass both ASLR and DEP at the same time. The basic form of format string vulnerability is very simple. It happens whenever an attacker's input 
which is a format specifier, such as your first argument of printf. The format string vulnerability is so powerful that an attacker can launch an arbitrary read, which can be used to leak a code pointer, as well as an arbitrary write, which can be used to launch a control for a hijacking attack. When both exploit primitives are combined, an attacker can bypass both DEP and SLR without any difficulty. To access the tutorial, you first have to log into the lab server hosting the fifth lab challenges. So please find the exact information in separate material. Once you log into the server, you can find readme files under the tutorial format string directory, which is described the detail of each step that you should follow. Prenf support a variety of format specifiers such as percentage %p for a pointer, percentage %s for a string, percentage %d for an integer, etc. It also supports an advanced feature such as a positioning argument which allow us to select a particular argument instead of accessing them in sequence. Let me show you how we can construct an arbitrary read from a simple format string vulnerability. To illustrate an example, let's assume the format string buffer locates in the, in the stack, which in fact is not a strict requirement as you can see in our challenges. In this specific setting, an attacker can defer the format string buffer itself from the second argument. For example, the second percentage %p in the format specifier will print out the 0x4141441, which is an AAA string that we provided as part of our input. If you replace the AAAA string with the particular address of your interest, you can read the address with percentage %s. In this example, we also use the positional argument to refer the second argument instead of providing two percentage %p's. In this week's Crank Me challenge, we injected a format string vulnerability when handling the invalid password. For example, if you provided an AAAA string, it print out the provided but invalid input as part of a message. However, if you provide a format specifier, such as percentage %p, it starts reading the value from the stack. To locate the format specifier buffer in the stack, you can provide a pattern, A, B, C, D, E, F, as a prefix of the format specifier and start looking for the pattern in the output. If we replace percentage %p with percentage %s of that position, it crashes when it attempts to read the value in that address. As you can see in the message, it crashes while reading the C, D, E, F address. If we replace C, D, E, F, with that beef, it crashed while reading the that beef address. Let's break ASLR by leaking the address of the printf located at the global offset table. You can check the global offset table entry by reading the ELF of the target program. If you replace the that beef with the GOT entry of the printf, it print out the address of the printf as part of the output. However, you cannot see that in the console as the address is not printable ASCII value. If you pipe it to the hexa dump, you can check the address of the printf. I like to note that the value keeps changing whenever you execute the script, as ASLR is enabled in this binary. In this week's tutorial, your task is to extend this exploit to an arbitrary write and so fully hijack the control flow of the CrackMe challenge. In summary, we learned two popular defense mechanisms called DEP and ASLR and their limitations. More importantly, we learned a powerful class of vulnerability called format string vulnerability that we can abuse to bypass both defense mechanisms. Happy hacking!